We're continuing our statistical treatment of lab data by taking a look at the relative deviation. It's somewhat similar to the standard deviation. It tells you how well your data is clustered around uh, your average. So the tighter it is, the better. And uh, it's slightly different than standard deviation because it incorporates a little bit more of the average. But you might be asked to calculate it. So let's take a look. We're calling it D here which is in the top part of uh, the quantity here, the sum of the difference between the data point and the average. And notice we're taking the absolute value of each of those to make them positive. Then we're divided by n, which is the number of trials. And then again, we divide that whole quantity by x, which is, again, the average. And we're going to multiply by 1,000. The reason that's typically done is these could be really small numbers. So you multiply by 1,000 to make it a little bit bigger. And then that puts it in what's called parts per thousand, or PPT. All right, let's take a look at an example. I have these three data points. I took the average, these divided by the number of three. The average happens to match one of my data points. Doesn't matter if it does or does not. Now, let's look, take a look at how this calculation would work. Okay, so I'm going to do in the top here, take a look at each data point, 1.97 divided by 1.88, absolute value, do that for the other one, 1.88 minus the average 1.88, and for the last one, absolute value of 1.80 divided by 1.88. I divide that whole quantity by n, the number of trials, in this case three trials because there's three sets of data points. I divide this whole quantity by x, which is the average, 1.88 in this case. And then, to put it in this case, what's called parts per trillion, just because it can often be a small number, we multiply by 1,000. All right, in this case, I got 30.1, and I'll put PPT here. Again, that means parts per 1,000. The smaller this number is, the more precise that your data is. 